Uh, welcome back to another edition of Jen's Sports Corner <laughs> for Sunday, um, January 2022. Yo, it was a crazy game last night. You already know the vibes. You see the title. Giants got they, they wigs pushed back, man. That was a beatdown of epic proportions. Hey, at least they can say, at least the Vikings fans can say this. They're not the only person that got beat 38 to 7, man, because. Well, that wasn't even as close as I thought it would be. It was just a complete massacre. Dismantling. They got discombobulated. It was crazy. So let's just get, give a brief recap. Because I was out there, and, bro, when I was walking up to Xfinity Live, it was so packed, they weren't letting people in, even though there was a line. And then we went over to the casino instead, and on the way walking to the casino, we were already up 7 nothing. and then, boom, I hear people cheering, and I hear fireworks. I'm just, oh, man. That's that's never a bad sign. So they was in there already tearing their stuff up in the first quarter. You know what I mean? And then we got into the into the bar in, in the casino and it was they did it had no answer for what we were doing. No answer at all. And you look at the final stat line, I mean we were putting putting up touchdowns left and right. Uh, a couple of things that stood out to me. Eagles won 38-7, as you know. 14 points in the first quarter, another 14 in the second quarter. The game was damn near over at that point. <clears throat> and then Third quarter, they come out to get a touchdown on a trick play. They got into the red zone, got a touchdown, boom. I thought they would put up 14 to 17 points, which they did not. And then in the fourth quarter, we put another 10 points on there just to drive the nail further into the coffin. And one of the most uh, diabolical, sadistic beatdowns we've seen in a while. Jalen Hurts came out, looked healthy, tested his shoulder out early. He had some design runs, so they knew exactly what he was going to do. They knew the shoulder was good, and then he hit... Um, Devontae Smith on that long pass on the first drive. And then he hits Dallas Goddard with the one-handed catch. Just smooth as butter. And then goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Set the tone. You already knew what the vibes were, what time it was. And we ran for how many yards? 268 yards on the ground. I think that's second most in playoff history. 268 yards on the ground. The third most was the Eagles against the Cowboys in the 1980 NFC Championship game where, where Wilbert Montgomery ran all up and down the field on Tom Landry's Cowboys. And then second most would be this game against the Giants. 268 yards on the ground, bro. Kenneth Gainwell, first 100-yard rusher for the Eagles in the playoffs since Brian Westbrook. Back before, it had to be before 2010. It might have been 2009 or something. He had 112 yards, one touchdown. Uh, late in the game, but even early in the game, he was running all over them. Then Miles Sanders, 17 carries, 90 yards. Boston Scott, 6 carries, 32 yards, and a touchdown. Jalen Hurts, 9 carries, 34 yards, and a touchdown. Bro, like, they had no answer. Devontae Smith did his thing, 10 targets, 6 receptions, 61 yards, 1 touchdown. Had the touchdown on the um, wide receiver screen. They, they, they didn't really know what to do against this Eagles team. All they really had was Saquon Barkley, and that's pretty much it. And we did a good job against Saquon. He, he had one 39-yard game, but after that, he, he had eight carries for 22 yards. He did absolutely nothing. And <laughs> at, by proxy, the Giants' offense was stifled. They had 109 pass yards. Think about that. 109 passing yards. 118 rushing yards. 227 total yards. That, that Eagles defense, clamp, clamp, lockdown. You got absolutely nothing for him. Nothing for us, man. Let's check the comments real quick. Quick, We on Facebook Live here. You know I mean, for the people watching on YouTube. Uh, Ryan says, if they play like this the rest of the way, no one is stopping us. And that's facts. That's that's absolute facts. Because um, I just want to get a synopsis, but we're going to get into the predictions for this Bengals-Buffalo game and then the 49ers-Cowboys game later tonight. And those two are very intriguing ones because I think they're very tight matchups, even more so the Cowboys and the 49ers one. So let's go ahead and and get right into, you know, before I do that, let's have a moment of silence <laughs> for the Giants and their season. All right, that's enough. <laughs> moving forward, rest in peace, <laughs> clowns. Um, moving forward, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about the first matchup at 3 o'clock, which is coming up soon, between the Bengals and the Buffalo Bills. So I have a couple of notes here. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, before I uh, move forward, click the like button, subscribe when this is up on YouTube. Uh, share share the word. It definitely helps with the channel. 
But we got Joe Burrow coming off that win against Baltimore, that that tightly contested game. He had 209 yards, 99.6 passer rating. Played a solid game, got it done. But in, in his playoff career, he's 4-1, and one, you know, the one loss being in the Super Bowl. But he's, he's on fire, man. Six touchdowns, two interceptions. But he's going up against his Buffalo defense. For second in the league in points per game, 17.9 allowed per game. Seventh against third down. Uh, fourth in the league against the QB uh, quarterbacks with an 82.1 rating given up on average. And they give up six and a half yards per attempt, which is fifth in the NFL. In the NFL. And you look at this Bengals offensive line, they still can't block. They haven't fixed those issues. And then they just lost their starting left tackle against the Bengals. So they're going to be in a world of hurt against a Buffalo pass rush that even though they don't have um, Von Miller, you still have Ed Oliver. You still have guys that can get up to the passer, passer. And they're going to have some issues there. They already don't pass rush well, even with their starting left tackle in. And against this this. Buffalo defense with the back end, which Davius White and them boys in that secondary, they're going to have an issue. So you look at the matchups here on the outside, you have <clears throat> Tredavious White, you know, one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL for the Buffalo Bills against Jamar Chase. That's an elite matchup. Mono we mono, you know what I mean? Put your chin strap on, you know, bring your lunch pail. It's, it's going to be a battle of the wits. It's going to be a chess match all game. So against uh, Jalen Waddle and... Um, Tyreek Hill last week against Miami, he gave up eight targets for four receptions, 53 yards versus those guys. And, and I know it was a backup uh, quarterback, Skylar Thompson and whatnot, and they, they, they really uh, did a number on them. But still, he did a really good job locking down those guys on the outside. And then even Kyer Elam, he's coming in, and he's, he's taking over for an, an injured guy in the secondary, and he's going up against T. Higgins. T. Higgins had a very good year, 1,000-yard receiver, I think seven touchdowns this year. He had a couple quiet games, but every time he has one or two quiet games back-to-back, -back, he always comes out and just lights it up. So that's the matchup to look for. Kyer Elam, who played well as a rookie against T. Higgins. Uh, T. Higgins had six targets, four receptions, 37 yards last week, but I'm looking for him to have a breakout game. So that's going to be a matchup to, to watch. And then you look at how they are against the tight ends. It, look, you, you got uh, Hurst, I think, but they're number one against the tight ends in Buffalo on defense. So, like, you're not going to beat them up the middle. So, if you're not able to run the ball against them, which I don't think they will be able to do, and if Jamar Chase isn't winning the one-on-one matchups quick enough for Joe Burrows to not get sacked, I think it's going to be a tough, tough task for them to beat this Buffalo team because this Bengals defense, they're solid. They're, they're okay in the secondary. Not bad. Nothing special. But it's not going to be good enough against Stephon Diggs and all the weapons they got on that offense. Against the tight end, they're solid. But, you know, they did good against Mark Andrews, but who else does Baltimore have with a backup quarterback start versus you're coming in against Josh Allen and uh, Dante Knox, and you got to worry about um, Stephon Diggs and then uh, Gabriel. You got all these weapons over there, you know what I mean? Um, and So I'm picking the um, the Bills to win this game. I think it'll be a good one, but I, I can see them winning by 7 to 10 points in a very, very lively game. So that's my predictions for that. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, look at the comments real quick. Um, shout out to you, Naeem. Um, shout out to you, Gary uh, and Ryan. Uh, I thank you all for tuning in. Um, but, yeah, that's my thoughts on that one. And then getting to the one that we all care about here, 49ers versus the Dallas Cowgirls. <laughs> 49ers, I think they're favored by, like, uh, what is it, like four points from the line or something like that. Uh, this, this is a really good matchup here. You have... The 49ers, who completely decimated whoever the hell they played in their first game uh, last week in, in a similar fashion to the, <laughs> the way we just did the Giants dirty. And then you have the Cowboys. Uh, they came out against a squad. You know, Tampa Bay, they all right. They made the playoffs, but they had so many holes. I didn't think Tampa was going to win. And I was five for six on my picks last week, by the way. And I should have picked the Giants, but I just – that was a tough game because it was such a 50-50 toss-up in my opinion. Because the Vikings are probably the worst, best 12-win team that I've seen in a long time. Don't have a defense, and Kirk Cousins is going to Kirk Cousins in the playoffs, which he did. So you you look at Dallas and what they were able to do against Tampa Bay. You know, Zach threw, I think, one or two interceptions, but they were just a better team. He's not going to be able to get away with that going against this San Francisco defense and this team. 
because his defense is going to make you pay with Bosa and them boys up front. They're solid on the back end. And then offensively, ever since they got McCaffrey, they've been a different team. And ever since Brock Birdie uh, has been starter, a starter, they've they've been uh, keeping it moving. I think they've won their last nine games, including this last playoff game. So they've been on fire. They've been hot going into the playoffs, and they're staying red hot. Going against a Dallas team that, if they're not able to get pressure on Brock Purdy, who is able to extend the play, they're going to have a really tough time. However, I think this is going to be a much closer game than what we're going to see between Buffalo and Cincinnati. Because at, at, at the very least, Dallas has a better offensive line. They can run the ball. Tony Pollard has turned into quite the the running back to to compliment Ezekiel Elliott. And then you have CeeDee Lamb and them boys on the outside. And you have Schultz at tight end. I, I, I can see this being a field goal game or even a seven-point game, but a close seven-point game. I think that I think that Dallas is tough, but I think San Francisco is just a more complete team. Better O-line, uh, more explosive plays. And this is a website that I follow, Pro Football Focus. And one of the differences that I think separates the Eagles and San Fran from, and, and uh, KC from, from the rest of the teams right now, even including Buffalo, is the amount of explosive plays that they have. Look at San Fran and Philadelphia and KC. In terms of explosive pass plays, KC is first, Philly's fourth, and then San Fran is fifth, and then Buffalo is second. But then you look at Dallas, they're at 13th, and they're there for a reason. Um, they're, they're solid, but they don't have enough big plays down the field. And if you're not able to stop San, San Fran from really tearing, tearing the top off with Debo Samuels and, and run CMC, it's going to be a tough task, dude. And then you look at O-line, Dallas, they're sitting at 12 in terms of their efficiency in terms of their O-line, whereas Philly, 1. San Fran, 7th. But they're probably a little bit better than that because, you know, Trent William at, at left tackle, still one of the best left tackles in football. Makes a difference. And then defensively, we look at the uh, the weighted rankings that they have for defense. San Fran sitting there around, um, at sitting first. Philly second, and then KC, they're, they're a little bit after uh, Philly, and then you have Dallas and Buffalo and the rest of the teams and whatnot. But it's really San Fran and Philly that have the defenses that get turnovers and explosive plays. And we hadn't seen that a, a lot out of Philly in the past couple of weeks, but the turnovers, they were there. The sacks were there. They were getting on uh, Daniel Jones' head, pause. And I, I think that San Fran's going to bring the same type of ferocity at home against Dallas. And Dallas, that line is going to have to be ready, like I said, for Bosa and that front seven because they are no effing joke, man. They create havoc. And the havoc rating for the Eagles and the 49ers are second and fourth, respectively, with Buffalo being first, okay? So they create havoc. So they're going to have to have an answer. They're going to have some. I just don't think they're going to have enough. So I'm picking San Fran in a, in a pretty good game here. Um, but that's my pick, picks for this week. Um, I didn't think that what was the, the game uh yesterday? Uh let's let's look it up. I'm I'm still coming off the high of that Eagles game that uh, my mind is just all over the place. It's just all over the place. I you know excuse your boy on that one. But let's look at the scores from yesterday before the Eagles game. And that was the Chiefs and the Jaguars. Now I thought that was gonna be a good game. I just thought that the Chief, the Jaguars are just a little bit green, a little bit too green. And the Chiefs, there were more seasons. You have Pat Mahomes playing at MVP level. It was between him and Jalen Hurts for the best quarterback in the league this year, in my opinion. I just thought that the Jaguars just would be lacking just a little bit of oomph. And they did. But it was a very good game. So my pick was, was the Chiefs for that one. Um, I, I think that was uh, probably the popular pick as well. And then, obviously, not, not just because they, they're my team, but because I just thought that the Giants, you beat a, a team that's rotten, in their internal structure in the Vikings, but you weren't going to have be afforded the same luxury against the Eagles. Even though you played them twice, you got a feel for them. You're playing a healthy Jalen Hurts. And mind you, Lane Johnson came back healthy, which made a huge difference, which is why they did what they did. So yeah, we got 49ers, Eagles. That's my prediction for the NFC Championship game. 
And then I think for the AFC Championship game, it's going to be Chiefs and Bills in a rematch of last year's game. And I think that, well, I'll tell you what I think next week about that matchup, if and when it happens. Uh, that's it for this episode. Uh, uh, let me know what you guys think. Like, subscribe, comment, leave your thoughts, and uh, let me know what you guys think. And uh, fly equals fly, man. You know what time it is. You know the vibes. I don't, I don't even have to say anything. You, look at the scoreboard. Look at the scoreboard, and I'll catch y'all next week. <laughs> Peace.